Hey everyone, it's Kong again with another episode of Should You Summon. As always, I'm going to be presenting high-level overviews to help you decide whether this banner is worth your hard-earned vouchers and crystals. This week is the beginning of a new major update, and not only that, it's another crossover event, this time with Shining Resonance. No, not Shining Force. We'll be getting Excella as a free SSR via the event, but the characters we're going to have to summon for are Sonya and Kirika. As usual, since this is a headliner, the banner will run for the entire duration of the monthly cycle. And because it's a two-person raid-up banner, whenever you manage to get an SSR hero, it'll have a 40% chance of being either Sonya or Kirika. The remaining 20% chance is reserved for any random off-banner unit in the regular summoning pool. So let's get started with Sonya. Sonya is a double infantry bruiser and or mediocre tank. Her talent is mercifully straightforward. If there are any allies nearby, she takes less damage, and if there aren't allies nearby, she deals more damage. In combat, enemies aren't able to benefit from first strike effects. Note that this doesn't mean she gets first strike, it just means that the opponent also doesn't, so combat resolves normally. Finally, she has a once per battle revive back to 50% HP. Her 3 cost skill is a 7 range debuff that you place on an enemy, and it makes it so that the selected enemy can only target Sonya with attacks and skills. When a lured enemy attacks her, they have a 100% reduced crit rate. Sonya herself gets 20% attack and 20% defense. After use, the skill turns into a short range teleport that splashes damage to nearby enemies. If this splash happens to hit the lured enemy, then you can move another two blocks and act again. Her guard skill covers both physical and magical attacks, and passively makes her immune to displacement. It also adds a portion of her attack to her defense, and it gives nearby allies a little bit of damage reduction if they're attacked from outside Sonya's command range. Besides all this, she has some typical brawler skills like air slash, shield bash, and frontal assault. She's a member of Heroes of Time, buffed by Joshua, Angelica, Yusuke, and the Awakened One, Princess Alliance, buffed by Luna, Shelfaniel, and Christiane, and Legion of Glory, buffed by Ledin, Elwyn, and Grenier. Huh, I just noticed that all of the Legion of Glory buffers are SP characters. For content in PvE, she's on faction for Leviar and Scylla in the Eternal Temple, and Hugin and Munin and Needhog in Ancient Beckoning but I don't see her being a strong enough pick in any of those fights to replace anyone. Similarly, I don't see her being strong enough in PvP to replace anyone. There are already self-buffing Princess and Glory tanks. She does have access to Phalanx and Angels to help mitigate damage from Cavalry and Magic, respectively. I just don't see the whole package as very compelling. Sonya's build will really depend on what you want to do with her. In general, you should just slap a bunch of bulky tank gear on her with a focus on attack, since she adds some to her defense. In practice, this will probably mean grabbing stuff you've already built off of other characters, stuff like Forbidden Defender, Fury of Tear, or Aeneas headgear, and then something like Overlord's Badge, or Bond of Arashi, or really any whatever accessory protects you against the thing you're worried about. Full Moon and Breeze would be her go-to enchants for most purposes, although some people might want to get creative with steel or thorns or something like that. But since this is just general advice, I'm not going to get really into the weeds with the pros and cons of every possible combination. So before we risk that, let's move on to Kirika. Kirika is a long-range physical AoE archer. Her talent gives her plus 20% attack, and lets her stack up her unused movement. Instead of adding it back to her mobility like Claret does, she adds it to her skill range, up to a maximum of plus 8, and this includes line skills. So let's take a look at her skills to see what this actually means in practice. Her 3 cost skill passively gives her an Eolus-like effect where she has a 30% chance to take 20% reduced range damage. The active component is a 3 range, 1 line attack, that hits the front unit for 0.6 times AoE damage against their weaker defensive stat, and then any unit behind them for 0.2 times damage. This also disables the armor for every enemy it hits. So with her talent stacked up to the full plus 8 range, 
Being able to do an unguardable 0.6x AoE pop from that distance is pretty cool. If hitting a bigger span is your goal, her unique 2 cost AoE is kinda like Thousand Arrows, but it gains increased span if you have 3 or more stacks banked from her talent. This lets her potentially hit a 4 span AoE from very far across the map. She's a member of Heroes of Time buffed by Joshua, Angelica, Yusuke, and the Awakened One, Princess Alliance buffed by Luna, Shelfaniel, and Christiane, and Yales Legends buffed by Landius and Sigma. For content in PvE, she's on faction for Leviar and Phoenix in the Eternal Temple, and Needhog in Ancient Beckoning. I could see her being handy in the ET fights at least, because she could contribute while staying out of range. Any unit with a range gimmick might also come in handy for some future challenge or cheese, we'll have to see. On the PvP side, unlike Sonya, Kirika actually does see some play in Apex Arena. Being able to stack up range during the early setup turns and then blast someone across the map to give your team an opening can be a good way to control the engagement. Of course, obviously you're not going to have max range from your talent all the time, and it does take a couple turns to build it up, so it's not like she can just be a map-wide threat all the time. For her build, most Kirikas would want that new AoE boosting bow that just came out last month. It was pretty much built for units like her. Armor and headgear will be typical archer fare, probably last rites. With her range, King's Crown will be fine since she'll be staying back with your team most of the time. You can help her AoE snipe pack an extra punch with one of the accessories that boosts your effective damage like Slayer's Emblem against Flyers, or Judge Talisman against Holy. It really depends on who your biggest target is. For enchants, she doesn't really need Breeze as much as some others because she doesn't need to move much in order to get her full range. But that said, getting Breeze mobility can help her stack up her talent range even faster, giving you less downtime between map-wide snipes. An alternative would be something like Blazing Sun, where you'd hope to amplify your snipe with big critical hits, kind of like what Free Kong does with Toma Hashiba. Alright fine, I'll talk very briefly about Excella. I usually don't devote too much air to the free units because they're free, so you don't need to take complex factors into consideration when deciding whether to dedicate hard-earned resources to them. Just get them for free and build them if you want. Easy. But since I haven't had any spare time to make any dedicated Free Kong videos yet this summer, here are a few words on her. Her main gimmick is that she has a 50% chance after each action to gain a talent buff. When she gets this buff, her next attack has a plus 100% crit rate and speeds up its cooldown, if it was a skill, by 2. The buff then gets consumed, but she does have a 1 cost skill that gives you a 50% chance of the buff staying on. All this RNG coupled with the fact that the one cost is an assist skill you actually have to use rather than an always on passive, makes her whole kit feel a little awkward and unreliable. Her unique two cost skill is a gravity well like Sleipnir's, which sucks nearby enemies into it and deals some AoE damage. Her 3C is basically a 3 range attack that lets her melee soldiers join in, nothing too too impressive there. She's a member of Heroes of Time, buffed by Joshua, Angelica, Yusuke, and the Awakened One. Empire's Honor, buffed by Bernhardt, Leon, and Lance. And Strategic Masters, buffed by Ultimuller, Landford, and Grenchiel. For content, she's on faction for Phoenix and Valkyrie in the Eternal Temple, and Sleipnir in Ancient Beckoning. In PvP, she basically just hits stuff. Maybe you could make her gravity well a thing, but I just see that being more annoying than actually effective. I guess you could use it against, like, pure tank turtle teams to kinda try to screw up their formation. But on the other hand, how often do you see Lyphony running around in Apex? There's a reason for that. The characters who are used to disrupt formations are also good at other stuff, like Leon for example. So I mean, try to throw her in and play around with her and see if you can actually make anything happen. More often than not, the kind of turtle team that you're going to want to try to use this gravity well against is also well equipped with tools to make it not as effective as you would hope. For her build, just give her standard Lancer or Flyer stuff depending on what class you're using. Flyer has more attack and more mobility, while Lancer has more bulk. So if you wanted to actually use her in PvP, you'd probably want Breeze, but in PvE, she'd probably like Blazing Sun to take advantage of those juicy guaranteed crits. 
Alright, let's move along to the notes for noobs. Sonya is skippable, unless you really like her design or if you're a huge Shining Resonance fan or collector. Kirika is less skippable. She'll be usable in the right kind of Apex box, kind of like Sagini from last month. There's a spot for her if you want to use her, but she's not the kind of hero that everyone needs to box or else risk being left behind. Lina, who's the main character from the next crossover after this one, is another long-range critical AoE blast unit who will most likely take Kirika's place in these kinds of boxes. So that's another thing to think about. Maybe she only lasts for a few months. That's a long way of saying she is a PvP option for now. Excella is free. You don't have to summon for her. Just go get. Why are we still here? Finally, we have my usual note about upcoming banners. Next week sees the long-awaited return of the Sword of Light and Shadow, aka the powerful new Zerida 2. Unfortunately, she's not on a guaranteed Destiny banner, but a raid up alongside Akka. This will run alongside our usual monthly wishlist banner for Langrisser 1, 2, and 3 heroes. The following week will give us a Yeles Legends Destiny banner featuring Shelfaniel, the Sage of the Trees, and Wheeler. And this one will run alongside the monthly Langrisser 4 and 5 wishlist banner. Finally, the double Destiny banners at the end of the month will be the Tensei one, featuring Patsir, Julian, and Werner Daim, and the still excellent Empire one with Elwyn, Leon, and Bernhardt. Interesting note on this banner, Bernhardt is confirmed to be getting his SP class during the 5th anniversary, which will be in December or January for us, making this the first banner to feature three SP heroes. It's also a good note that if you don't have Bernhardt yet, he is going to be getting that boost in a few months, so you may want to lock him down now. Next month's major update will be two more new OCs, a mermaid tentatively named Nymph, and a little assassin girl with huge magical dragon hands named Tatalia. We'll talk about them more in their dedicated episode next month. Anyway, that's it for this episode. I am not super excited about these characters, to be honest, but since it's a crossover and I'm like 65% a collector, I'll try to throw some vouchers in and see if I can get one copy of each, just for the bench. Let me know in the comments below or on the Tone Discord what your summoning plans are. Thank you so much for watching everyone, I wish you all the best of luck if you are summoning, and I will catch you in the next Should You Summon. Extra special thanks, of course, as always, to our Langrisser tier channel members for generously supporting the channel directly. Shout out to Levitt, Kate Soon, Jared Portela, Jerome Meyer, and Harambe. Shout out to our supporters from the other tiers as well. Even though I know you don't get named in every episode, I definitely appreciate your support. Anyone who's interested in joining the very wallet-friendly tier of support is definitely welcome to click on that join button. Every little bit helps me keep this channel going. Thanks, everyone.